Welcome to Pal Ponder Ultra, everyone. We're going to expand the view this afternoon and take a look at the big picture. We're finally with this area low pressure that's been lurking out around New England that is finally kind of winding itself down and moving out into the open waters. But what's lurking behind it, we have the active subtropical jet stream. It We're still in that El Nino setup and we will likely be in an El Nino for another month or two that likely will set the stage for a very active April on the severe weather front. And our next storm system is moving ashore. And as it ejects outward, it's gonna spin up an area of low pressure highlighted across Nebraska here. That's where we could set the stage for a slight risk for severe storms. It's been highlighted across Nebraska as well as into Kansas. But a much more potent system is already starting to come together and that's going to be diving south and eventually eject outward into the plains and set the stage for a multi-day severe weather outbreak potentially as we head into monday tuesday and wednesday of next week so i appreciate all my subscribers out there this is my bonus channel pal ponder ultra so make sure you you hit the subscribe button and you're subscribed to this channel as well i am going to be doing three videos a week going forward on this extra channel so make sure you hit the subscribe button and follow along with all my breakdowns so here's here's the setup on the surface map going into saturday afternoon there's the area of low pressure will start to deepen up there into northwestern uh, Nebraska, that's going to set the stage for an additional renewed threat for showers and some severe thunderstorms could be a damaging wind threat. Some isolated tornadoes is definitely can't be ruled out the closer you get to the area of low pressure into Nebraska. But as you can see further south, with that limited moisture supply coming back from the Gulf of Mexico, as you get into Oklahoma and especially there into Texas, it's, it's not going to be much of anything because it's mainly going to be right around that area of low pressure. And as this continues to push off to the east, it is going to wind up, you know, that low pressure, can, as it winds itself down, is it, it basically expands. And as it expands, it's going to push a kind of, a kind of a squall line, if you will, you know, not, it's just a marginal severe threat squall line, not really terribly too concerned. These are stronger wind gusts that could be highlighted across, you know, Wisconsin, back through Illinois, uh, highlighted across uh, Louisiana, back there into Southern Texas. What this main system is going to bring is a lot of heavy winds coming across uh, into the panhandle. We could be looking at an extreme wind gust of 60, maybe 70 miles an hour, and even higher of that in portions of Colorado. We do have a high fire danger in place and also high wind warnings and watches for a good part of this region with much of this area, even down into West Texas, picking up those very high wind gusts. But going into Monday, here's what's going to happen with that low pressure center finally moving out. We actually have a ridge, a high pressure ridge building back over New England. So for the areas that have actually been inundated with the snow as of late it actually is going to set the stage for likely the nicest weather coming up for the solar eclipse yes folks who's actually not going to have the nicest weather is down there in texas and across the plains because yes we have that renewed storm threat coming into the picture as we head into monday evening and before that we are going to be seeing a warm front lifting back up from the south and stalling somewhere around the Red River area. And that's going to set the stage for a round of severe storms heading into Monday night. So before that, we are going to have the solar eclipse. So this is something a lot of people have been waiting on for many, many, many years. All right. So we have totality expected in South Texas all the way down to four minutes and 26 seconds. You can see from the latest blend, we do have a 73% chance of seeing cloud cover during that 1 p.m. time slot when the eclipse is like is expected to happen. But as you get further north, you can see it right in the Dallas Warbur theory, about 67% probability of seeing clouds. But as you get away from that southwest wind and start to get closer to that ridge down there in southern Illinois, now you're only talking about about a 25% chance of seeing some cloud cover to view the eclipse where you're likely gonna see the best opportunities is closer under that high pressure. 
definitely up here in New England and likely Maine, where it has a 0% probability of seeing any cloud cover whatsoever, basically sunny skies, you're going to see full-blown totality, no question about that. But I'll be updating this every day as, as we get closer to the eclipse, which is on Monday around 1 o'clock. So, but what more concerning after that, with that warm front that's going to be lifting uh, northbound, that will set the stage for a very wet, soupy air mass. It's going to be locked over the south and much of the deep south there into the southern plains. We're looking at uh, water content values in the two inch range, folks. That is a lot of heavy rain and a lot of moisture to feed. And unfortunately, it's going to tap into elevated instability as well. Look at some of these Cape values surging. Looking at those 2000, right around 2000 Cape values surging from the south and to the north as this warm front continues to lift further north and likely will stall somewhere in the Red River vicinity between the Oklahoma and Texas border as we head into Monday night. And that will set the stage for a renewed severe weather threat highlighted over much of North Texas, back into West Texas, into Central Texas, and much of East Texas as well, as the warm front will have a lot of low-level winds associated with it. Those changing of winds at heights would support, unfortunately, tornadoes. We're going to have some colder air aloft, so that would support some bigger size hail, especially with that instability moving in. So very concerning setup as we head into Monday night, especially with these dew points, these elevated dew points continuing to surge out of the Gulf and even the low 70s. That's actually the highest we've seen so far this year with the storm system coming in. So it's got an abundance amount of moisture to supply to tap into an elevated instability. And that always spells trouble with intense updrafts of all three modes of severe storms and the kicker is that is not even actually the main system. The main system will still be lurking out there by New Mexico. And that still has to eject across. The problem is it's going to be a, just a very slow mover. So that's going to set the stage for a multi-day severe storm. So even as we head into Tuesday, a lot of the same areas that get impacted on Monday are likely going to be in the bullseye again for Tuesday. So those same areas in North Texas, down into Central Texas, it would likely shift further into East Texas, but it would include portions of Southeast Texas by then, as again, all three modes of severe storms would likely unfold with some of these uh, training supercells with that cold air aloft would support that bigger time size hail, including tornadoes again, and damaging winds. Sometimes some of these areas could actually have some bow echoes at time, and those would support some 65, possibly 75 mile per hour wind gust as these mesoscale convective systems race across and dive to the southeast with that slow moving trough that will be moving across. That always sets the stage for a flooding event. So I would imagine by the time we go into Tuesday, this area is going to be under flash flood watches because we are looking for an, a, 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 an extended period of time. We're going to have a severe threat and those per hour, two inch per hour rain rates potential with the atmosphere. That's always concerning, would likely induce flash flood watches across much of Texas, much of Oklahoma, and then going into the southeast especially as we go into Tuesday night and Wednesday. And if we look at the breakdown on the hazard map outlook, yeah, it's pretty intense, folks. As this system comes across, it's going to set the stage for higher winds that will move, move across. But especially as we head into the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th, we got a multi-day, three-day severe weather, severe weather storms breaking out. Not only that, also heavy rainmaker from April 8th to April the 11th, into Texas, into Oklahoma, into Arkansas, Louisiana, and much of Tennessee, back into uh, western portions of Kentucky, into Mississippi and Alabama. And as this continues to move across, as we get into the 11th time frame, it will likely be highlighted over Georgia and portions of uh, Al you know, Alabama by then. But look at the rainfall estimates just over the next five to seven days, folks. That's a lot 
of heavy rain will likely be coming for a good part. So we have the first system that comes across, very limited moisture supply with that one, does leave a swath of rain, especially around the where the low pressure is and lighter amounts further south. But it's the more concerning system that comes through on Monday, especially into Monday night, will set the stage for rounds of severe storms and heavier rain. So if you look at the map here, those are easily widespread four to six inches of rain highlighted across much of, much of uh, the eastern side of Texas, back into Louisiana, into Arkansas, as well as into Mississippi. And that will extend with the heavier rains into Tennessee, back into the Alabama region, and it will eventually head into Georgia and parts of Kentucky as we head into deeper in the day on Wednesday and going into that Thursday, folks. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and follow along with all my breakdowns on this extra channel. I appreciate all you guys' support out there. And catch me next update, why I protect you before and after storm.